So, getting back to uh, more conceptual stuff. And again, here's where your, especially your uh, non-hippy-dippy, trippy grammar teacher who might be in your head and me diverge. So I want to be super crystal clear about this so that we know what we're talking about when we talk about grammar. Three different types of sentences. These are terms I'm going to use throughout the rest of the semester to define how complex is that sentence. First of all, grammatically simple. And me and whatever grammar teacher would be on board, both on board with this. Grammatically simple, it has only one single action. It has only one single subject doing that action. And it has only one single object receiving that action. That's it. There's only one of each, period. That's the whole sentence. You can't have a super complete one sentence tells a whole little mini story um, sentence in English and be any simpler than that. Okay. Grammatically simple. And obviously, a sentence like that has no punctuation other than the period because it's just one thought. That's it. Second kind, of, well, then another type of sentence, complex. Complex sentences have more than one action and or more than one subject and or more than one object and there's no clearly most important single one of each. Like this sentence here, the agent and her sidekick ran up the hill and then they leaped over the wall and shot at the truck. There's running, there's leaping, they're shooting at. It's not entirely clear, especially, just skim it quickly, what's the most important thing going on there? That's why it needs this comma conjunction to coordinate two potentially important complete thoughts that you've jammed together. Okay. So a complex sentence has multiple actions and or subjects and or objects, and it's not clear <laughs> It's not clear that there's only one that's the most important. Therefore, you need grammatical punctuation, like commas, conjunctions, things like that, to coordinate all the important thoughts that you jammed into one sentence. It's complex. And then in the middle, you've got this third type of sentence that as a practical workplace editor, grammaritician, Maybe that's a term I'll make up. I'm a grammaritician. Technically, it's not a simple sentence as far as your like fourth grade grammar teacher is probably concerned. But I think from a practical perspective, it's just as good for workplace writing. It's practically simple. Practically speaking, it's just as simple as a grammatically simple sentence. Sentences like this. The agent and her sidekick ran up the hill towards the truck. A lot of people would argue you've got two actions here, running up and also towards. Towards seems like a not a clearly action-y thing, but look at the objects. You've got running up the hill, so that's an object. And you've got towards the truck. They're not running up the truck. So there's at least clearly two objects here. And a really strict grammar teacher would say, oh, the agent and her sidekick, mm, that's two subjects. I would say it's one, because you can substitute in they for it. But again, I'm the whole phrase person. But the point is, you definitely have two objects. You have arguably two actions, and you have arguably two subjects. But there's no grammar punctuation. Because practically speaking, it's this. They ran. They ran, uh, they ran up the hill towards the truck. It seems pretty clear that running up is the clearly most important action. So why do you need punctuation? The rest is just like, oh, an extra in towards the truck. Okay. So practically simple sentences, although they may technically have more than one action, more than one subject, even more than one object. They have only one clearly most important of each. One clearly most important action, otherwise known as the main action, otherwise known as the direct action, which is how it's defined in the worksheet. People give it different labels. 
clearly most important. So therefore, it communicates only one main thought. Therefore, no grammar punctuation is. Can't even have grammar punctuation or else it would be a splice. Okay. More examples. 